Adbusters and Gorilla Girls, a comparison of culture jamming advertisements. Culture jamming is considered a form of resistance to the hegemonic culture through the use of satire and irony. Culture jamming is the practice of criticizing advertising and consumerism in the mass media by producing advertisements parroting those of global brands. Gramsci, an Italian Marxist thinker, described the concept of cultural hegemony as the domination of a culturally diverse society by the ruling class who manipulate the culture in that society. Adbusters aims to resist the dominant ideology of consumerism. Consumerism is a social and economic order and ideology that encourages the acquisition of goods and services in ever-increasing amounts. We are the most voracious consumers in the world. A world that could die because of the way we North Americans live. Adbusters works in the interstitial spaces between uh, media and reality. Uh, and what I mean when I say that is that we try to occupy the space that exists between both. There is a reality that we exist within. There is also a mediatized reality that is a projection of what we exist within. And what we try to do is reveal that space um, in ways that can be uncomfortable, in ways that can be satirical, in ways that can be uh, parody. Um, but really what we want to do is reveal that space. My goal in doing this research project was to find out which culture jamming images cause a more favorable reaction. I am looking to either validate or disprove the belief that culture jamming leads to positive effects on society. In short, does irony work when trying to spur positive change? I conducted my own research in order to find out how people react towards culture jamming images. I organized a group of 15 college students between 19 and 24 years of age. First, I showed them this photo from the Calvin Klein Obsession campaign. 13% were unaware of what the ad was trying to sell. I then showed them the Adbusters parody. Three people were unsure as to whether or not this was part of the same campaign, while three felt confident that it was part of the same campaign. This means that only 60% understood that it was even a parody. Fragmentation. Next, I show my recipients a photo of the Starbucks logo. In a way, Starbucks is the perfect example of the cultural hegemony that Gramsci describes. It dominates the coffee industry around the world. Six people had negative opinions to Starbucks, while two were indifferent. Roughly 47% had positive reactions. I then shared the Adbusters version of the Starbucks logo. In total, one in three people found this Adbusters campaign to be offensive. While one remarked that Adbusters should not dislike a company just because they have been wildly successful, one person said that this image exploits a stereotype and comes across as aggressive. All in all, nobody believed that this image is telling them to stop buying Starbucks. Next, I show my recipients a few images created by the Gorilla Girls. Gorilla Girls is an anonymous group of radical feminist artists devoted to fighting sexism and racism within the art world. Well, in 1984, the Museum of Modern Art reopened after a renovation with an exhibition that was entitled An International Survey of Painting and Sculpture. And out of uh, close to 200 artists, fewer than 17 were women, and there were almost no artists of color. Uh, and it was a little annoying because the curator of the show said in the press, this was Kiniston McShine, that anyone who was not in included in his show should rethink his career. And we just pushed away at that. I think there was the general assumption at the time that if there were no women or artists of color in the mainstream art history books, it meant that their work did not rise to the quality necessary. Well, we knew that wasn't true. We knew that history is a richer story than that and that you cannot tell the story of our culture without the voices of everyone in the culture. Otherwise, it's not history, it's just the history of the powerful. For this image, I took out the Gorilla Girls logo just to make sure nobody answered based on previous opinions. 
One person remarked that he was tired of hearing about inequality. Seven people reacted with anger, but they were already aware of this claim, while six were unsure of whether or not the claim was true, but had also heard complaints. The same six people felt that this issue had been oversimplified. My studies seemed to indicate that this gorilla girl's image was neither informative nor caused any action to be taken. This image uses sarcasm and completely omits one of the more controversial debates in American politics, abortions. When I asked if any of the images made a person want to take action, 100% of the people said no. <coughs> Based on my results, the Gorilla Girls and Adbusters make people feel angry and offended. The images did not make people want to resist mainstream culture and ideas. At best, this form of cultural resistance does little to change people's minds, while at worst, it actually contributes to dominant ideologies. One researcher even found that being exposed to absolute vodka subvertisements did not have a negative effect on the brand, but actually increased brand loyalty. I also came to realize that adbusters, while trying to challenge a dominant ideology, participates in the same ideology. While they replace this Nike logo, they do not completely get rid of logos. This also applies to Gorilla Girls, as both Adbusters and Gorilla Girls use the same advertising and marketing strategies as any other company. Perhaps the most effective thing would have been to completely get rid of all logos. My third conclusion in doing this research was a critique in the way that Adbusters and Gorilla Girls function. Adbusters has a layout designed very similarly to any mainstream magazine. Yes, they use the anti-swoosh campaign to get people to boycott Nike, but this is still a marketing idea to make the viewer choose one product over another. One of the biggest problems here is that both Gorilla Girls and Adbusters are created by people who are up to date in pop culture and current media trends. This type of knowledge is required to even recognize the critiques in culture jamming ads. Culture jamming may be a tactic best suited to the maintenance of an activist community who already hold a critical position. If you want to make the world a better place, you have to completely destroy the underlying structure in which we produce and we consume. A few of the limitations in my research include the age range and the demographics. If I were to interview people much older, I would have received very different results. The work of the Culture Jammer is most powerful when it opens the doors for a healthy debate instead of dictating the final correct answer.